prisons, but then I ended up in, in a juvenile prison uh, through a number of different people that I met along the way and started working a little bit with the juveniles there and then started mm -hmm. working with the anti-recidivism um, sort of programs that are going on there. And it was extraordinary, mm. really mm. extraordinary. Yeah, yeah. Well, this is the thing with, I mean, both of your approaches, the way that you take to acting, the research that you do, and, and thinking of this new movie, I mean, it's incredibly real and lifelike in one respect because it's life on the International Space Station. And, um, and really the broad span of astronauts that are out there reflects very, you know, it's very real, isn't it, at the moment? Rebecca, do you want to start? We have no idea how big the universe is, and it's kind of... Science is absolutely remarkably beautiful and lovely, mm. and people keep asking me if I believe that there is life out there, and I mm. think we found water on the moon, and I think there are parasites in water, and of course there will be an alien form, but we are. I mean, this film is a very realistic sci-fi movie. We are, we are getting closer and closer to what could mm. possibly happen. Yeah. And how do your roles, each of your characters, fit into the film? What, you know, how does it come about? I play Miranda North. She is a microbiologist to imagine the worst thing that can happen and then the worst after that and the worst after that. Yeah. And then gradually they break down and I think that's where the true persona comes forward. Who are you when all of the, the stable routines disappear from you? Mm. Mm -hmm. And in essence, it's about life <laughs> jumping out of my skin i mean i know rebecca we were talking about how scary it, did you have the same effect when you saw it i mean well, i, I don't mean you were sweating but, but did yeah, i'm still sweating yeah, from yeah, it. Yeah. No, but i saw it uh, <laughs> sweating. A, a week ago and i think film to create what later becomes that effect yeah but at the same time oh yeah, so, yeah your I, character in the film though you seem quite calm you know you, you're dealing with the situations <laughs> and and you have got like your character's got a real fascination with space would prefer to be in space than on planet earth yeah well he's a medical doctor that's there for no other reason besides to make sure that the crew stays healthy and that you know if there's an emergency that needs to be dealt with medically mm. and it becomes a, a, a type of relationship i think with every single one of the you know the, the the creature has a relationship with all of us in a different way and however we respond to it it responds to us in that way so yeah. he's really fascinated with this thing and and actually finds it really beautiful and and is quiet you know um yeah sure and yeah. i think that that's what i, li I liked about the, the story. That's that. why you wanted to do it, is it? Because there's always a reason for you wanting to do your movies, isn't it? There? There's always an underlying message. Yeah, well, I mean, the creature doesn't speak, really. And and I, I thought maybe it'd be interesting if, if I didn't speak that much either. Mm. You know, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think it's interesting, you know. I think yeah. there's so much tension in the movie, it's nice to have. And I, da is. Daniel yeah. Espinosa, our director, was... Uh, cast it so beautifully yeah and people from all, you know we have a, a, a character from japan because the international space station is mm. multicultural so a character from japan there's a character from the uk from the united states from russia. you know russia so you know we have a mm. whole and and i think because of that we all interact with this thing in a very different way sure. mm. and i think because it's not set in the future as well it feels it feels like it could be happening that's what makes it more That's, scary, though, yeah. isn't it? That this is why you're, you know. I'm all right now. I'm, 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 I'm take some water. Have some water. No, no, no. I mean, you probably deal with things on the farm, you know, so yeah. you understand that there yeah. may be some organisms that are not I, always exactly. so helpful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, so which might, maybe back. why you're sweating. You know? <laughs> That's a very good point. I'm fine now. I'm fine now. Yeah. I'm fine now. Let's move on to your bromance that you had with with Ryan Reynolds as well, because always down to talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Good buddies then. No. Yeah, I mean, he's a wonderful man. I mean, a, a real love, and I, I think that's about, you know, just friends you meet at a certain time in your life, and it's just right. We met on this movie, really, and we just became really close friends. Yeah. And it's so inviting for, for me, especially when I come abroad, and there is already a jargon and sort of a, a yes. humoristic side, and it's very welcoming, and it just yeah. lightens up what could be a tense environment to film in, because it's, mm. it's a hard movie to shoot mm. from many angles. Absolutely. Yeah. But we laughed a lot. Yeah, it's my a... favorite moment was when, in that scene, Ryan turned around in the middle of a uh, middle of a shot. He just because he was right in the front, and we were all in the back watching what was happening to him with his hands. And he turned, <laughs> he turned, and he goes, "We're all gonna die." <laughs> 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 just like, you know, it lightened the mood a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it's strange dark humour, but we know him for that as yeah. well, so... And it's in cinemas from next Friday, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. So there's still plenty of time to see it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Was it? We had, didn't have anything to work off when we, mm. when we shot the film. So Why? I because, think, yeah, I you mean, go. I think Daniel 
uh, Espinosa, our director, really wanted us to use our own imaginations mm -hmm. and be afraid of whatever we were afraid of, you know? And yeah, I think yeah. that was, it was so great about Daniel. All over the place he did that. Yeah. And he allowed us to interact with the alien the way we would be actually yes. afraid. Yeah. You know, and that, and then in the end, you know, he created, I consider actually the creature to be a bit like Daniel sometimes. That he, really? Because he was in our ear speaking to us in scenes. He was saying it's yeah. coming up it to you, it's mimicking, moving up to yeah. you, it's ah, talking to you. Okay. So he directs you to yeah. know where to look. And so it was like him manipulating us in that really kind of amazing way. And I think also sometimes it was nice seeing Calvin through other people's eyes. My character was, I see her sort of behind glass because she's always behind the box that the, the um, firewall. Mm -hmm. um, and also she would see the beauty, like Derry Hugh. Um, loved this creature and it was mm. like a little baby for him and I think she experienced beauty mm. through seeing what he saw in Calvin as well. There are so many angles that you can attack it. Yeah. Okay. I, think, I think also what's great about you two as actors is you've, you've both been involved in very physical films, Mission Impossible, Jarhead, Southpaw. You really have to dedicate not only your minds kind of learning the lines but also your bodies into the role. How was the training for life? 